Welcome back to the Hot Rod Reverend Garage. And um, today what we're gonna be doing is installing a um, set of Barker high lift rocker arms. Um, I've had these for, I don't know, four or five years or so. Uh, but these were made back when people weren't using um, zip codes. So they've been on the shelf for a long time. But uh, let's take a look at uh, the process and uh, what goes into getting these suckers together. Here we've got some rocker arm parts laid out. And what we're gonna get into next is uh, putting together the rocker arm assemblies for the 312 build. Uh, not too long ago, I dropped off the G heads at a, a machine shop not too far away from here. Um, just to have them gone over, uh, new valve seats, new valve guides. And just to double check a couple of things, uh, the heads are kind of halfway done, already been ported. Um, surface already been milled flat, I think 15 thousandths or so. Um, so we're looking pretty good in that regard, but uh, we do want to tackle the rocker arm assembly. So let me grab the camera, get closer to the parts and show what I've got laid out here. Before we go through the parts I've got all laid out here, um, just want to give this little uh, disclaimer. <laughs> There's very few things more controversial in the wild block world than whether or not you fully pressurize your rocker arm assemblies or if you use Ford's original overflow tube. Uh, on my 55 right now and the 292, I'm still using the overflow tube uh, on either side of course and um, not an issue there. But um, for this build here, what I wanted to do was to go ahead and pressurize the shafts uh, there are some other uh, videos online or different things that maybe talk about this, but I want to just kind of show you what I've got laid out here, what I'm doing for myself for the 312 build. Uh, first thing, I've got brand new shafts here. One of them's already open, just analyze it. I am going to cut um, diagonal here with a cutoff wheel uh, just a little bit to improve the oiling. Okay, as you know, as you well know, um, this rocker arm shaft sits just like so. Uh, that hole there is actually where the overflow tube would go uh, for the original application. And of course, all the shafts ride on the bottom and that's where most of the friction's at, of course, as those things pivot back and forth. Um, so we wanna provide a little bit more oil. If we wanna do that, I may not video a, a lot of that. That's kind of simplistic. Um, I've got cleaned up um, stands here that are very nice. Uh, these aren't new, of course, they are used, but uh, very, very good shape. I've got new uh, springs here from uh, Rocker Arm, especially Rocker Arms Unlimited out there in California. Uh, Gary out there hooked me up with a set of these. It weren't too expensive, but I've got new springs here. Got my washers and um, the spring washers as well, cotter pins, of course. And then um, I've got 5 sixteenths, uh, 18 thread, half inch bolts and we're going to use two of these uh, not four but just two of these we're going to shoulder uh, the bolt uh, a bit here and we're going to actually tap um, two of these stands and um, that'll help us orient uh, this hole here as we pressurize we'll show that in a, in a little while here and then i've also got these little babies here and i, I picked these up a, a few years back um, high lift rocker arms from the fifties. And, um, wow, it, it, these things are little gems here. NOS jobs, um, still got the residue, uh, to protect them all over this stuff. Um, back in the day, I think they sold these things in sets of eight. And that was the idea just to do the intakes, but we're going to do intake and exhaust, of course. So I've got two sets of these. Um, these weren't exactly cheap. I don't know what ratio they are. They're obviously higher than 143. I'm going to assume 150, 154, and we can play with that uh, ratio when we think about the um, push rods and different things later on anyway. But um, getting these, I thought, man, that'd be pretty cool to put them on the engine on 312. So uh, let's get into the build here. All right, first step is to take the uh, cutoff wheel and just barely nick uh, right across the oil feed holes there. I got one more to do here on the end. I missed that one, but um, anyway, we'll go ahead and do both shafts. Okay, now that we got the uh, little, little channels cut in here with the oil feed 
holes um, to help our rockers out a little bit, last a little bit longer. We're going to go ahead and take two rocker stands. And um, rocker stands, I always mount them with the uh, part numbers, the stamping um, on the bottom. Um, you can do what you like to. From what I understand, there's a little bit of a difference. I've never measured, I'll be honest. But um, so I'm going to go to the top and tap two of these uh, for 5 16 18 threads. We're going to go ahead and get that done next. Of course, uh, original rocker stands are made of aluminum and they, um, they tap kind of easily so it's not not much of an issue there um for sure all right we're going to go ahead and put the bolt in there and um not just uh obviously test the threads out and everything but uh we also want to show you how much of that is is left when you um when you get ready to shoulder this obviously so we're going to just seat this down on top and that wrench is kind of dirty there. That ducker gets cleaned up. Because uh, truthfully, it's, it's not a whole lot. But you can tell, um, if you look in there, I don't know how much you can see, but um, it's just a little bit's all you need. Maybe a thread or two there to take off to shoulder that bolt. That's gonna keep that shaft from spinning inside of the, um, inside of the stands. All right, the next thing we're gonna do here too is um, deburr this sucker. Um, fill a couple little burrs right here and then on the bottom and I got a, got a file we're gonna do that with, bastard file. And then um, two, I'm gonna cut uh, with the file just a little uh, groove there on the inside. That's just for air pockets or anything else. Give it a place to weep out. Um, so at any rate, let's get that done. All right, we're gonna do now is just take our um, file and uh, basically uh, we've already we've already cleaned out the burrs and everything on uh, both of these. So um, they're looking pretty good, but we're gonna go ahead and cut just a small channel um, right in line with the hole and right in line with the shaft, of course. So, okay, let's just take a look at uh, one of the stands here we got done. I got both of them done, but um, Went ahead and tapped it, and then um, I've also got that little channel in there. Kind of want to double check all, make sure I don't have any burrs in there and all of that kind of thing. But uh, the idea for that is just so uh, there's kind of a kind of a weep hole that um, the air too doesn't get trapped inside that shaft. And uh, we can certainly double check that when we prime our oil pump even before we start up the engine. But um, pretty much ready to go here with these two stands. And then uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and take uh, this bolt here, or I guess a couple of them, and uh, take off the first thread or two and uh, make sure that we can use the bolt to uh, center the shafts on the stands. Okay, so what do you do with this without the proper tools and your Mr. DIY? <laughs> well, um, got it secured to the vice, of course, and then I put a nut down there so I wouldn't get too crazy, but also when I take the nut out, It'll kind of help me with the threads and I can run a die over top of that too, just in case they get a little bit boogered up. But you can tell I've got it already shouldered a little bit. Um, the camera will get in there right. But uh, what I'm doing too, as I go along, is I'm grabbing um, a shaft and I'll go ahead and check and just make sure that um, I'm not taking off too much or that I'm just barely fitting on there. And um, as you can see, Got a good, um, got a good fit right there. So um, I'll probably go a little bit deeper, uh, just for safety's sake. You don't want the threads uh, bottom out on top of that and getting all buggered up. And um, one of the things people might ask, well, why not just drill out this hole a little larger? I could do that, but boy, there goes all the junk inside the shaft. I'd have to take out the plugs on the ends, and um, I don't want to get into all that. So um, I'm pretty sure this is going to work just fine. All right, uh, we're going to get these things um, all put together now. And uh, I can't stress enough cleanliness uh, with this idea, of course. 
I've got some thinner here. I'm going to wipe down my uh, shafts and some of the other parts and different things we're putting together. These have the Cosmoline, I'm sure, still on them and different things, but I'm still going to wipe some of that down. And then um, I've also got some 30 weight oil. Uh, I'm just going to lightly oil some things as we go along. But um, process isn't too difficult. Um, I'll try to get some of it here recorded for you as we go. So lightly pinching this in the vise. Um, when you squeeze it together, of course, it makes it to where the shaft will slide into here. It's going to be not tight, but it's going to be one that um, you're just going to have to make sure you can, you know, you can wobble and stuff. It ain't good, any good. But um, line up your uh, exit hole with the um, threaded hole you've got at the top of your stand. And then go ahead and get your, get your bolt down there. And then... Um, Sense this down, and that will keep this booger right here from moving left or right. And you can tell it's just a little bit, got a little bit of rock to it, but not much. And then when I release this uh, stand from the vise, it's gonna it's gonna cinch down anyway a little bit. It'll it'll compress back, and uh, we'll be good. But that's that that's a good sign though, to be honest that it's doing that because it, it stops it from going back and forth. And then too, I also know uh, my shouldering, I wasn't too tight. In other words, I'm not so tight against the shaft that um, it, ain't, it ain't, you know, that I've, I've boogered up threads or anything, or maybe boogered up the hole or even extended to where it's so tight against the top of the stand that I've actually lifted a little bit. One thing I try to do is I try to orient these to where the, um, cotter pins down at, it ought to be easy to recognize especially since we've got this going on but sometimes um guys are rebuilding things they don't put the overflow tubes back in very quickly and just got stuff spinning if the stands a little bit loose but um i i just just do it this way it's very easy to orient your rocker arms um your shafts if you do everything the same way i think it makes sense to put the cotter pin uh in from the top but um Hopefully, I'm not insulting my intelligence on that one, but I've seen all kinds of stuff. Kind of get it lightly pinched, and um, to go through, just make sure everything's lining up. And um, you don't want things to be super tight, but obviously, if you got a pound through it, um, you're not doing so hot. But when you release, you release the vise um, that that stand uh, is going to really kind of kind of clamp down. I don't know if you can see right here, but this one here, the second one in from where the overflow tube's at, that's where our hole lines up to feed the whole shaft and all the rocker arms. So that's obviously extremely important. Okay, one assembly down, well, one more to go. Um, got the cotter pens secured there and uh, everything lined up the way it's supposed to be. Um, no big deal. And of course I got a little bit of 30 weight oil here, but uh, I'll get the other one together and uh, we'll save this for the G heads. So uh, pretty good stuff, looking forward to it. Okay, they're all together. Um, one thing to talk about real quick are the adjusters. And um, usually I've done the two piece jobs. I know guys get frustrated with those. That my, my take is I think they hold better and not as prone to get loosened up like the one piece, of course. Oh, I think late 56, 57, of course, all, I think most 57s, can't remember for sure. But um, anyway, around that time frame, Ford switched to a one piece adjuster, uh, much like the FE rocker arms. And uh, most aftermarket, if not all aftermarket, have one piece adjusters. They're a little bit lighter, of course, than a two piece job. And you can tell um, what I've got here, these are two different links. I think Ford actually made I think it was actually a third different length. As I recall, I've seen those. And then I know there's two different lengths of these and then two different heads. I've seen half inch like this one, then also seven sixteenths. But uh, most probably I'm gonna go with one piece with these, um, these interference fit and just go with that. I'll, I'll save these. Um, just just for later on i'm gonna put them on right now i'll wrap these up in paper here and um put them up until i get the engine together 
then I'll throw these on there. I've got I got a ton of these. But um, at any rate, there we go. Um, we're all set for the rocker arm assemblies.